Oh, sorry. Start. <laughs> we were recording that. <laughs> oh, so and welcome to the amazing and the hilarious <laughs> Rochelle Inch. Hiya. So Rochelle um, has got some news. She recently came on the Actors Boot Camp in Portugal. And um, when she came, she was very low on confidence. She lacked self-belief. She didn't think she could do it, but she had this determination. But she lacked belief. And then she came onto the boot camp and everything changed everything mm -hmm. changed almost mm -hmm. in an instant her mindset changed and everything stopped being i can't do this and it became what next come on bring it on and but you hypnotized me <laughs> i did this is true i did <laughs> um but what happened when she left was she booked her first ever professional acting role. So she's going on tour with Seren Benick Productions very soon. Um, and it's part of an anti-bullying campaign. So hi, Rochelle. Hi. Massive All right. Congratulations on your role. I'm really, really happy for you. Yes, babe. Pretty tough myself. <laughs> The change in you was absolutely incredible and it came in the space of just a few hours, I found. Yeah, How yeah, like feel? a barrel window. <laughs> How did it feel to, you? it was almost as if you came in as one person and you left as not a different person, but just a completely different version of yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I just, you, you just sort of took away all of my anxieties and all my bad feelings and you've just, you've taught me that I'm worth a lot and that I'm very talented and I am very determined and I am very hard working. I don't know, you just like switched a little light switch in my brain and I just thought, I'm fucking fabulous and I'm <laughs> going to own it, basically, and then yeah. <laughs> Oh, that was it. <laughs> I love it so much. I just, I love hearing you talk like this because so many conversations we've had have just been the complete opposite and yeah. absolutely buzzing. I can't <laughs> how happy it makes me. So <laughs> this um, tour you're doing with um, on anti-bullying, what yeah. does that subject mean to you? Does it mean anything to you? I mean, have you ever been bullied or had any experience? Oh. Like yes <laughs> have I ever been bullied yes um it's really actually quite close to my heart because I was actually bullied all the way through primary school so from about four or five years old and I was bullied until I was in about year nine so until I was about 14 15 so yeah so a good solid 10 years that I was bullied for by various people and in what so. way were you bullied uh, mostly mental bullying. I was really physically bullied. Um, I was always quite tall. I'm five, I've been eight since about 12. But um, I always seemed to get bullied by girls that were a lot smaller than me. But it was, I was quite shy and quite timid when I was younger. Um, so it was mostly mental bullying, name calling. Um, I, being mixed race, when I was younger, I got a lot of racist bullying from black people and white people. So I was sort of getting it from both sides. Right. Um, yeah, mostly just sort of name calling and being put down a lot, you know, going into school every day, dreading, like, what's she gonna say to me today? What am I gonna be called? Are they gonna laugh at me? And Did you ever have yeah, anybody just... stick up for you? Any what, sorry? Do you have anybody who stuck up for you? Or did you feel um, like not really no not really because I suppose I, I mean in secondary school it was probably a lot worse but I went to an all-girls school and it's 
you get a lot of bystanders because people are scared to stand up for you because if they stand up for you, then that puts the bully's attention on them. Mm. So, I mean, yeah, maybe a handful of times a friend might have said, oh, like, don't do that. But I don't really remember being stood up for much. And how did it feel when they were calling you these names? Well, just sort of felt like shit most of the time. Mm. Uh, um, I was undiagnosed when I was younger, but having been in therapy now, my therapist reckons I was definitely affected by it from a very young age and very mm. depressed and anxious due to my bullying. Mm. Um, yeah, I just always felt like really crap and I was bullied by so many different people that I actually did start to believe that I was the things that they were calling me like mm. but I, it was always that I was ugly or um they take the mickey out of my frizzy hair and that I'm mixed race but I'm very light so that was often a thing that was said like oh you know you're too light to be black or you t- you're too dark to be white and I just didn't really ever know where I fitted in with anyone and I just sort of hated myself because everyone else seemed to dislike me so I just yeah I just sort of hated myself and just really dented my confidence really. And how how did it affect you as you got older? Did you find that you were still hanging on to what they were saying and how they made you feel? So when I was about 14 I, st- I started um, martial arts I started doing Muay Thai and um, because I, I put on a lot of weight at 14 and then um, yeah my uncle was like I'll stop whinging and come into Thai boxing and that that sort of empowered me a lot because it I don't know I felt a bit stronger and I felt like you know actually if that girl picks on me again I'm gonna punch her in the face like and I felt very confident about that and people found out what I was doing and because like I said I was five foot eight, 14 year old, and like a size 14, like people became to get a bit scared of me. And I think I actually ended up taking a bit of pleasure in that because people stopped picking on me and I started standing up for myself. But then in turn, I became quite an, quite an angry person, like very volatile. Mm. And I just, I don't know, it's like I felt, well, oh, actually, you know what? If I'm just horrible to people or defensive and like just don't show them that I'm really shy and intimidated, then but I won't get bullied anymore. Um, so I guess, yeah, in a way, it kind of reacted in quite an angry way. One thing, I used to feel quite bad about it. Um, one thing my mum used to say was, um, if you kick a dog enough times, it's going to bite your back. Mm yeah resentment for people and over the years those bullying labels and the tags that people gave me have sort of stuck with me so like when I'm having uh, when I'm having a low day or weeks times like I'll remember the things that people used to say to me um it's part of my PTSD so like when I'm feeling down just remember like lots of bad memories, name calling and I can be We just had some technical difficulties there. So um do you wanna just rewind a little bit? Um how has it affected you since you know since you've become older? Um yeah, so as as a teenager, um, I got involved in martial arts, began doing Muay Thai because I'd put on a bit of weight and stuff. And um, people sort of became a little bit scared of me and sort of backed off. And that quite, I felt quite empowered by that, like knowing that not only was I five foot eight and they were five foot nothing, so I'm, I was bigger than them in height and width. And now I knew martial arts, so I, I don't know, I kind of, relish and the fact that people were scared of me and I did sort of I was never a bully but I was just a bit of a bitch like I didn't take any shit from yeah. anyone yeah. like you could look at me funny and I'd be like what are you looking at don't look at me like that like I became quite aggressive yeah um 
And I did like, I got, I had felt a lot of guilt for it because that's not who I am. Mm. But I felt like that was the way I had to be for the last three years of school, like just to get through it. No, you were protecting yourself. Pardon? You were protecting yourself. Yeah. So I I guess I became like a bit of a pineapple, soft Mm. inside, but spiky on the outside. Like, don't come near me, don't look at me. But um, I used to cry quite a bit to my mum and she used to say a saying to me, um, if you kick a dog enough times, it's going to bite you. Yeah. And she said, that was all that happened to me. It's just, they wore me down and yeah. I broke. Yeah, yeah, basically. totally. But um, yeah, like leaving, leaving school as an adult, I, can, I still had a, a barrier up for sure. Like I, it's made it quite hard something I talk about in therapy a lot I find it very hard to form friendships mm. um it's almost like I don't really know how to be friends with people because I don't know I just I always felt so defensive and, yeah. and I'm always thought I sort of pull myself away from people I'm not very trusting because I'm I've had when I was younger bullies pretend to make friends with me and then be spreading rumors about me and mm you know, bit like actually bullying me and I thought that they were my friends. So I, I only have like a small full of friends. So it's definitely affected my connection with other people and my, and my trust. And um, yeah, like as an, I suppose as an adult sometimes, you know, when my depression does flare up, I, I tend to be quite hard on myself. I can be quite, quite mean I call I can call myself some pretty bad names in my head and stuff yeah but um it always seems to be the names that I was called by other people yeah it's like a not it's my voice but it's like what they used to say to yeah. me yeah um, I suffer from PTSD as well from various other things mm. that have happened but um yeah bullying's one of the causes of my PTSD and what what kind of support were you getting at home or you know did you tell anyone did you tell the teachers um no London man from southeast London you can't be a fucking grass like that's just not she's not all right like what do you call it snitches get stitches like that was like a major dip at school like you just you don't grasp people up if I was to go and complain to another teacher and that those girls got into trouble they would meet me outside of school and they'd beat the crap out of me and yeah I've never really been a fighter if I'm honest um forgotten the question (laughs) I've forgotten what I'm saying no (laughs) you answered the question and what about at home could you talk to your family about it um no I've always been very secretive but there was a lot of I had a lot of stuff going on at home and um, I, I wouldn't want to go into just too much detail mm-hmm. just because my mum is quite private mm-hmm. um but yeah that there was domestic violence at home and and then I just had like a single mum as well after, after we after she left um her mm-hmm. partner then I had a single mum and she was always stressed and yeah quite anxious herself and I never really wanted to put any more stress on her like she had enough on her plate without sort of me going to her I mean I shared with her a little bit more when I was older Mm -hmm. but then I I wouldn't let her do anything about it but yeah it was obviously nice well easier when I was a bit older sort of 13 14 when I did start sharing with her um she was very supportive but I did sort of refuse to let her go to school and do anything about it. Yeah, yeah. So that must, yeah, just, have, been, that must have been tough have, because you were having a hard time at school and then there was difficulties at home as well. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I, I was like one of the main caregivers for my brother and sister at that age as well. So I'd like, I had enough going on. Yeah. If yeah. I'm honest, like I'd come from a troubled home life. I'd, we'd moved house when I was like eight, so I'd have to make new friends and I would always found everything quite stressful. I used to have to babysit my brother and sister, take them yeah. to school, feed them. So I'd like, I just had enough on my plate and the bullying just really didn't help. Like I really yeah. could have done about it. Yeah. And that, you know, I know that you've struggled a lot with anxiety and yeah, 
depression and um but i mean I, i've seen a real change in you so do yeah you want to talk us through how you've managed to keep going despite those little voices in your head despite your past experiences how have you managed to keep going and how have you managed to keep strong despite what's going on around you and you know now you've booked your first professional role yeah. on this amazing new journey now so talk us through how you overcame everything I think I'm just really resilient, but I, I get that from my mum. My mum is super resilient as well. And I guess, yeah, she raised me to be tough. Like you don't feel sorry for yourself. Like shit happens. You fucking, you get up, you go out and you just do what you can do. Like that's just how I was raised. Like, you know, I'd be like refusing to get out of bed. Like, mum, don't make me go. They're going to pick on me. She's like, fuck those bitches. You need to go get your education. Like, like, just go do what you can do. Like, I think that's just kind of my attitude in life. Like, even when I'm having bad days, you know, I literally sometimes, not, not so much now, but in the past, I've had days where I can literally get so anxious about going to work that I can paralyze my whole body. Yeah. My therapist thinks it's insane that I can actually do that to myself. But I always... Even if I'm half an hour late, I always get my ass to work because that's just what you've got to do. I, I'm a strong, I'm a strong lass. And yeah, I can't sit and lay in bed and cry and pity myself all day. You've just got to be strong yeah. and just, things can only get better. Like mm. seriously, my childhood was so rough. Like I've always just thought things can only get better and that's all I've ever strived for. Mm. Mm. basically I don't know if that answers your question or not <laughs> yeah definitely and what, Special would you say, what would you say to other people who are either being bullied if there are you know if there are any one watching this who are being bullied whether you know whether they're kids teenagers adults or whatever um and what would you say to somebody who's got anxiety, who's struggling to, you know, keep going with their daily life. What would you say to those people? So that's uh, two different questions. There's like a million questions. <laughs> one, like, Let's break what? it down. So first of all, <laughs> what would you say to anyone, anybody who's being bullied? Or right. Being bullied? Okay. I would say something I learned, um, off like a few years after like growing up you realize that the kids that bully they're not happy they've normally got stuff going on and they really are taking it out on you you know if they're, if they're calling you names try and take it with a pinch of salt just remember that life is probably a lot worse than yours and but are bullying for a reason and just i mean although i didn't go to teachers it's very different now, I think. Um, bullying is taken very seriously. I'm a teaching, a teaching assistant in schools as well, so I know that it's taken very, very seriously. And it's more likely that something will be done. You know, like, just try and be brave. Try and tell someone. Even if you don't tell a teacher, tell a friend, tell a parent, auntie. It's so nice to just share and get it off your shoulders it, like you'll feel so good for sharing like you won't feel so alone but just remember that those dickheads that are bullying you at school they're going to amount to nothing man and you're going to be on top of the world and you're better than them so just awesome. stay strong man awesome. so awesome. yeah um, well, that's part of the question <laughs> yeah yeah and haven't you found as well that um, people who tend to be bullies at school end up not really doing anything with their lives? And the people, yeah, bullied, it's like they reach they <laughs> seem to reach their peak at their school. Peak. That's it. Yeah, then the people who are bullied, they come out of school, they build their confidence. And there's no We're freaking resilient. We're resilient. They've built. Yeah. That yeah. 
So the bullies, without they, realizing it, have helped them, you know? Yeah, they don't realize that what they're doing is strengthening our backbone. Yeah. So they're preparing us for life at work. It does not as bad at work, but like they're preparing us for like, you know, at the end of the day, humans aren't nice people. Like, we're just not. They're just not a great race, no, are we? Everyone's got good and bad. You know? Everyone's got good and bad, but like, you know, like humans can be mean and they make us resilient, ready to workplace, ready to venture out in the big wide world. They've built our resilience and our backbone. So thanks, bullies. Where are you today? <laughs> oh, do you know, I'm going to tell you a little story. Uh, I saw my one of my main bullies, the girl... She bullied me for three years solid in secondary school, year seven to year nine. Um, her her favourite thing to do, every day she'd come up to me, are you black or are you white? And I would say mixed race. And she'd say, no, you have to choose or you think you're better than everyone because you're light. And she just always seemed to pick on me about my colour and stuff. Um, oh, I won't go into that part of the story. We, we ended up having an argument one day and I won. But... Um, yeah, I saw her when I was at university as a mature student, um, like my third year of university, I think. Mm. Um, I used to work in Argos and I've seen her come in and I thought, oh, fuck. Like, I was like, literally, I turned in to the 13 year old me and I just thought, oh, God, she's going to she's going to judge me. And, da, 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 da. and then I was thought, shit, she's coming to my till. Like, God damn, I've got to serve this cow. But then, do you know what? She came up. And I just thought, you can do this. Like, who the fuck is she? And yeah, she was like, looked me up and down. Oh, is this what you do now? And I was just like, no, actually, this is my day job. Like, I'm actually at university studying education. What do you do? Mm. And she was like, oh, well, well, um, well, I'm a mum. You're not a mum. Oh, don't you have kids? And I said, no, I've got career ambitions. Thanks very much. And she just sort of looked at me and was like, uh, uh, okay. And just like paid and left. And she just sort of gave me this look over her shoulder. She was leaving like, oh, like I tried to be mean to her. But I just, I just thought, yeah, she really tried to belittle me because I was working in retail. And I just thought, well, no, I'm not going to let you belittle me for working in Argos. And I'm not going to let you belittle me for not having children. Like yeah. I'm my own person. Yeah, brilliant for you. You want to have kids, have kids. But I always had a lot more ambition from a, like I've always had a lot more ambition. And I always, my career has always come first. Yeah, Change we've all got our own journey. It's always first. Judge anybody else for whether they've <laughs> No, I don't judge them. But, you know, I wasn't. They do. That's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, but I just wasn't going to let her get away with it. No, Whereas, right. you know, when I was yeah. younger, I would have shriveled. Yeah. Yeah, but I just so no, you for you. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So, um, what would you say now to somebody who has anxiety and is struggling to get on with their daily life? What would you say to them? Get help. Like, I've, I reckon I've probably had, had anxieties since I was in primary school, you know, like I, I recently moved house actually. And I, I found some pretty horrific diary entries from being a teenager. So I'm pretty sure I've suffered with this on and off my whole life. And as soon as I reached out for help about four years ago, when I had a met, like I had a full on breakdown, everything just became so much easier. And I highly recommend therapy to everybody, anxiety or no anxiety therapy is so healing for the soul like seriously just being able to vent to someone and just talk about your problems and just realize that you're not the only person in the world that has these problems and you're not crazy i always thought i was crazy i am not crazy like i'm just different my brain is wired different i've had a lot of trauma and i would just say get help, whether you go to the doctor and request NHS, NHS therapy, or you can find therapists online. They tend to charge about 60 quid, but if you, know, if you don't earn a lot of money, a lot of therapists, private therapists, are really willing 
to put the price down to accommodate your wage right like because they really do want to help people they don't want you to be suffering yeah and, yeah just professional help seriously yeah. like you, you, four years of therapy has undone so much damage that has been caused by my childhood mm-hmm. like so much damage has been undone and I'm, I'm at peace with so much now mm. and yeah I just I just think it's really really helpful and that mm. but definitely even if you don't go to therapy you know if you're feeling suicidal call the Samaritans you know just anything just share share with somebody don't suffer in silence because I found that when I had my breakdown and I told people I was so embarrassed mm. I thought I felt really pathetic like oh my god as if I've broken and my friends were they were they were really supportive really like you know then people start sharing with you I found out people I've been friends with for 10 years I, I didn't even know but had breakdowns right. you know people have share with you if you if you're open yeah people are like, back yeah. and you know put someone you know they'll be like oh my mum's been through that like you need to talk and the more you talk about it the more you realize that the majority of people have some kind of mental health problem yeah lots well, of people is willing to talk about it and it's bizarre because yeah. if you had a broken leg you yeah exactly feel and you wouldn't have been silent like that would you you just no, exactly. Leg. But for some yeah. reason, with mental health, there seems to still... It's a bit more than it was, but there's still yeah. some sort of stigma around it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's, talking about it breaks that stigma. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, a, a good charity for mental health is Mind. Yeah. They've got a great online service and... Um, They've got a thing that you you can sign up to where they send you like a monthly magazine and you get to read other people's stories. And that's been really quite helpful as well. Brilliant. Yeah. Samaritans and Mind have been really helpful. Awesome. Very good advice. So what is next for you, Rochelle? What's going on? What have you got planned? Uh, So I've just gone back to school for a few months. And then, yeah, so I'll be going off on my anti-bullying tour in November, I believe. Mm-hmm. And also going to be, can I, can, I te- can I say about what I'm doing for you? Can I say? Uh, let's finalise um, arrangements yeah. first. Got something let's, in the, there's got something, something very in the exciting. We can say something that. Very, in, in the works. Exciting. Coming yes. to London. So soon. So um, eyes out. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Feel free to follow me. Follow my journey on Facebook, Rochelle Inch. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I reckon just, yeah, I'm going to fully commit to the acting and just keep going with my acting training and uh, all my mindset. And um, yeah, just keep booking roles and freaking smash it really amazing amazing yeah I've got lots of plans but they're all kind of hush hush plans so <laughs> yeah. i haven't even told work i'm leaving so Rochelle Inch <laughs> on facebook to find out more follow her journey because there is follow me going on but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rochelle is changing attitude and you has been nothing short of incredible keep it up you are yeah. amazing. Um, before we go, <laughs> final words of wisdom for anyone who might be watching or listening to this. All I can see is your knee. Get your head back in. Oh, hey! <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm thinking final words of wisdom. Do you know what? You taught me this. Uh-huh. You can be anything you want to be and just just don't let people get you down. Just remember your worth. Stay positive. Be strong. Just fucking smash it. Yeah. Of anything, you are capable of anything. If I if I can just become an actor within eight months, then bloody anyone can do anything. I swear to God. Just keep pushing. And if you're out there and you're, you're getting bullied or you've you've got anxiety and depression, just remember you're not alone. Like just just reach out. And just be strong, man. Stay strong. Because you're awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Love you all.
<laughs> Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Rochelle. And I will Thanks see you Bye. Bye.